Yeah, I'd love to hear just from you, what are some of the things that you're telling your clients and some of the things that you've found out from, you know, your experience through the different market cycles? Obviously, this is another, you know, lull we're going into at the moment. Um, what have you seen happen over time? And what how- did you call it? Did you just call it a lull? Yeah, yeah well, that's yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to show that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, definitely, it's definitely that, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a lull. <laughs> and 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 the rest. Yep. Go yeah. On. Yep. But um, I guess uh, putting it lightly. <laughs> yeah. Just, is it ever? Yeah. Just yep, yep. um, just wanted to give people hope as well. A lot of this platform, I just want to empower people and to make people feel confident to push through because sometimes it might feel like this is never going to end and yep. you know it's only just starting so and well, this is the thing this is this is the scary thing for so many is that you know how long are we you know we, we, th- th- this is uh, it's only just started and yeah. uh, potentially it's going to go for uh, many weeks or months even and um, you know and in fact they're talking more months than weeks aren't they yeah and so um, yeah, well, it's you know sort of brace yourself. That's 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 it. So at, at the moment, mate, you've got me at a, at a at a point where all I'm doing at the moment is talking to clients that are just so very very worried. Right. Mm. The the thing is, mate, my I live in Melbourne, but my business is in Ely Beach, which is a tourist town, and the vast majority of um, of our clients are tourist operators. Uh, wow. Well, mate, they, they've just been decimated, and yeah. and so we're talking overnight three and a half thousand people have, um, are unemployed. Yeah. Um, that is that is a significant percentage of the town's population. So we, you know, so for me to, you know, it, it, it's it's not a pretty sight, and the um, the implications are very dire for those clients and the town generally. Um, you know, so we've got individuals that are just walking out of leases, residential leases, and just leaving town and. You know, you walk down Ely Beach, mate. It's yeah, it's like a ghost town at the moment. Yeah. But but um, mate, uh, a lot of my clients, my my most of my clients, in fact, are from out of town, right? So I, I deal in the, in the bigger end of town. When I say bigger end of town, they're not exactly BHP size either. But we're talking, um, you know, um, you know, businesses that are not based in the tourist town and um, various types of industries and 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 a bit more you know, employing a lot of staff and, you know, a stronger bottom line and, you know, but, mate, they're all being impacted and they're all bracing themselves. And But even, um, uh, mate, regardless of what game you're in, the future's uncertain. That's 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 where we're at. Yeah. Now, um, if, if – so, anyway, um, yep, next question. Yeah, so in terms of that, uh, I find that very interesting because a lot of people – I'm obviously in the trade game. I understand trade businesses and, and what's happening in that era – and that, that space, I mean, um, and with the tourist businesses that you, you're working with, so what were those sort of decisions like? Did you do some framework first and say, well, is this, if this happens, then this is the decision we have to make? You know, we have to let these people go or how did we brace for impact there with those clients? Well, there was no, there was, there was no time. Not enough I mean, time. Ser- yeah. seriously, it, seriously, mate, it happened so quickly that, you know, one, one minute where we're having initial discussions with clients, the next minute, uh, mate, it's all over for them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, they just have to close their doors. We, mate, so it, it's it's the flow-on effect of, of um, you know, the closures of, um, you know, smaller businesses that, the, the, no, sorry, not smaller businesses, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the the closure of um, uh, eateries, right? Is is a big one. We do a lot of eateries, for example, right? Um, the the closure of the resorts have led to um, uh, have led to the uh, um, charter boat operators closing their door. Not so much closing their doors; they're still operating, but mate, no one's no one's renting boats. Anymore. Yeah. No yeah. one, you know, uh, you got you got the main operator that, that that takes the guests to the islands and take to the outer reef. They just closed their doors. Yeah. Now all of this has happened so quickly, but there was no opportunity for planning. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was just no, just no time. Okay. You know, it, 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 and this is this is the thing that has, has just shocked so many. It's happened so quickly. There was no opportunity to to look at um, uh, strategies. Uh, and at the end of the day, mate, when your whole market it just collapses, goes from from you know. Um, you know, being busy to absolutely zero business, mate. There's not a lot of scope for planning that, is there? Even yeah. if you had, even if you had time. But uh, it, it, it's so 
so severe and so quick that there was very little scope to do anything about it. So are we, well, are we getting rid of the staff and like almost putting it to a skeleton cost structure and keeping the business open or is it fully shutting it down it, completely? And, it, and Well, in some it? cases, completely shutting it down. Yep. There are some businesses made that have got no scope to recover. Mm. Um, so we, we are... Um, it sounds it sounds awful, doesn't it? It sounds like you know a defeatist, but you know we, we've got we've got numerous businesses that have got no scope to recover from it because uh, the, 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 they've got no alternative. You know, take take um, a, a business of, for example, um, char- not charters, um, you know, transport. You know, uh, the, of, of guests from the airport to to town and back. Right. Well, mate, they've just closed their doors. Right. Uh, we had. Um, uh, those sort of businesses, you know, um, they can now look for alternative types of income earning, but it's happened so quickly that, um, you know, we're now looking to see, if we, you know, they've got little buses and big buses and these sort of things. What do you do with those? You assets, just park them up. Yeah, yeah you've got yeah. assets there. Can they earn income elsewhere? Well, well, maybe, but mate, no one's going anywhere, you know. So uh, people aren't holidaying at all right now. Um and uh, people are just staying put, not allowed to go anywhere in yeah. a lot of cases. So um, if you've got an alternative, wonderful. But um, right now when, the, when, when there are closures of various industries uh, across the board, the alternatives, can't even, they're not even presenting themselves, you know. So in some cases, mate, uh, we have gone from um, one particular client who had um, – just under 50 staff, uh, they're keeping their doors open with the skeleton staff. has gone from 50 to um, to four, right? Uh, keeping their doors open and looking looking to see they can keep them employed. The other the other 46 um, have been um, what's the term? It's not retrenched, is it? Uh, but you know, the, the, there's no the, there's there's nothing for them to do. No work. Now and and. and um, are they stood you know, down? The, the, so, like, they're still employed but stood down where they don't get paid? I heard that's an option for people at the moment where you can stand them down and they don't get paid because there's no work but they don't lose their job either? Or well, is it- and it, this is just, I mean, I just, just, just sort of hot off the press this morning. That, that particular uh, client um, has retrenched them. In other words, they're out of a job. Sure. Okay. Now, um, you know, and so there's a whole bunch of holiday pay owing, which, yeah. which will be paid, but over, over a period because, you know, the cash reserves aren't there and will, will, will they be there up the road? I mean, right now, you know, he's made, technically in that particular business, maybe there are going to be some businesses that are sort of running the gauntlet. In other words, um, they will do what they need to do to stay afloat if they need to, right? Now, these, these concessions from the ATO, the stimulus package, um, in some cases made um, – it, it's it's not even going to apply to them because they have no staff anymore. And this is the sadness. Uh, that is to say, the stimulus package is there. Uh, part of the reason it's designed to keep uh, for businesses to retain. Sorry, mate. Let me just put my other earpiece in. I just lost uh, battery. That's all right. Yeah, there we yeah go. designed to mate, retain life, stuff. Life, life changing. This I should have done a long time ago. <laughs> oh, God, I'm too. <laughs> So good. Well, what's the cable? What's the cable for? Yeah. Oh, yes, you're on the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just on a computer. I'm on, it's just my feedback. I'm, yeah. on, my, I'm <laughs> on my mobile. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, yes. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I've lost my train of thought now. So yeah. So so in some cases, the, uh, the you're saying this the, is ATO is, uh, the ATO has designed it to retain stuff. Uh, well, the 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 the, the reason the, the the main reason uh, the assistance is there is order is in order to try to preserve uh, the ability of um, businesses to retain their their staff. Well, um, yeah, it's an assistance, but the reality is, if the work's not there, it made the staff have to go anyway. Yeah. In which case, in which case, they won't be entitled to those benefits, and and so, you know, it's only for businesses that still have. An option to keep on going. Yeah. In so many cases, they just can't. And 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 the, and the, 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 this assistance from the ATO uh, will never be able to, um, you know, turn a business around where they've lost the majority of their income. Um, you know, it, it's it's as much as it is serious. It, it's of serious assistance, and in some cases, it it will help 
keep the doors open, but in many, many cases, it's just it's just the loss is too severe and yeah. they can't keep the doors open just for the benefit of uh, the ATO assistance because that's not enough. So quick question on that. So if say if you've already paid $20,000 in pay you go withholdings tax and over the first two months and then the last month you had to let everyone go and you get to the end of March and you don't have the staff, will you get any benefit? Yes, yes, you do. Okay. Yeah, you do. So the, the way, you know, I don't know how technical you want to get at this point, but I mean, you know, if you're, on, if you're a monthly um, IAS, in other words, you're paying your tax every month. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, the maximum benefit you, you're going to get, um, if you're a monthly uh, payer, you multiply the, 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 the amount of tax withheld in that month by three, okay? Yeah. So uh, if, if your monthly uh, tax was say seventeen thousand dollars that's that's the figure that you know is nice to get to you multiply that by three there's fifty thousand dollars that is your maximum entitlement and then that's that's what you call a stage one entitlement stage two entitlement is even if uh, beyond the end of march if you have no further staff you will still get another fifty thousand so you will get one hundred thousand dollars okay fifty thousand uh, dollars just after lodging your March IAS, you will get that fifty thousand dollar credit. The other fifty thousand will come over the next four months by way of twelve and a half thousand dollars per month, yeah. regardless of what staff you've retained. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, you know, the reality is, maybe if you've got no no further business, it's interesting as to whether we've got so many questions that are still unanswered as to the mm. mechanics of the way it's going to work. But, um, and, and for example, if you've got an existing ATO debt. Does that credit just come off the debt? Because if it does, it's it's of no value then because all, all it's done is help reduce a debt with the ATO. We can't get an answer on that at the moment. Uh, and, unless you get it in your bank account, it's of no assistance. You know, mm. if, if it's just used to pay off a debt, well, it's cleaned up your balance sheet. But, I mean, who cares if, if, if you know, it's not helping you keep your doors open. Yeah. So, so mate, it, it is – the big numbers, $100,000 is, is, is a big number um, – but the reality is, it's only it's only uh, for it's not going to benefit everyone. The reality is, um, some businesses just are not keeping their doors open at all, mm. and this this credit can still hit their bank account. So I'm, I'm just, we we don't we don't have an answer. We're curious as to whether in a situation where you are actually closing your doors, technically you're still entitled to this credit. But if you're not keeping your doors open, then you know. Uh, it's a it's it's a nice benefit it to, to really be had, but, I mean, yeah. but what's it doing? Yeah. yeah, if you can't get the cash. So, but look, mate. That being said, we have got many many clients that will benefit immensely by this. Right? Yeah. And and so it is a it is a good. I'm, I'm sounding like you know it's all a waste of time. It's not a waste of time at all. And it is going to achieve a des, uh, a result. But for many, it's too late. Mm. Mm. Cool. So that's that's obviously happening with that. Um, with your clients in that space, is there any other things or strategies you're like, wow, that's that's really interesting. We can do that, or we can restructure this, and and there's a solution there for some people. Have you got any examples that people might be able to to use and realise? Wow, I don't have to just hand in my next business activity statement just the way it is. There's some things that we can do to help. Oh, I, I, absolutely, but we, mate, I I don't, you know. It's, there are strategies, uh, but I mean, it made them a bit, a bit sort of, a um, bit reluctant to talk about those strategies. In that, um, the way it works is this: that that um, you like to maximise your your your. Ins- oh, I'm not saying because it's intellectual property. What I'm what I'm, what I'm getting at is, um, it's supposed to be in line with previous uh, tax uh, withheld in previous months. So, if if to maximise your your benefits. You, you would like to have a very high PAYG um, withholding for the month or quarter end of 31 March. If that's dramatically higher than previous months or quarters, um, it's pretty conspicuous uh, as to what may have occurred. Yeah. Because, for example, if you're a little operator and uh, your typical PAYG withholding is um, not all that high and um, we want to maximise it, we'd like you to get, have all of a sudden a very high... Uh, POIG withholding 
for that month or quarter. Well, we might just create some wages for you, wouldn't we? But uh, I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. But that would be that would be a strategy that would maximise your your entitlements. And so there there are some strategies that are still still within within the um, within um, uh, within the rules that would maximise benefits. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's what we're doing one on one with each client, yeah. maximising entitlements because, mate, every cent helps. And and uh, when you multiply the month by three, the POIG withholding by three, if we can squeeze another two or three thousand dollars of POIG withholding for that for that for that month, multiply that by three, well, there's another ten thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. Um, and 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 that can keep the doors open for a bit, you know. In some cases, um, depending on the type of industry you're in. Mate, you can you can you can um, uh, you can change your method of operation or look for different income streams, you know. But um, mate, when you when when there are so many businesses that are that are that are suffering, it's 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 very challenging to just all, all of a sudden change your income stream when when everyone's mate, jumping onto the same yeah. new different thing, yeah. And, and 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 sort of a lot of businesses have just closed or, or sort of you know they're sort of limping along. It's it's you know, it's, it's very hard yeah. when the economy is strong and people are uh, are prospering, mate. It's um, you know happy days, you know. It's uh, uh, but you know when when everyone's got these these uh, challenges in front of them, it's it's um, I would find it very hard right now to identify a lot of opportunities out there. And other than uh, uh, the, the the people that are flouting the system and sort of selling, you know. Face masks for ten times uh, the the usual market rate and these sort of things. Yeah. But um. But yeah. Look, mate. That being said, mate, there are opportunities. There are always opportunities, and there and there are people there that can can find opportunities in any market. But yeah. um, the average punter out there that's in business, mate, um, is is um, yeah, very challenging. Yeah. We've been strategizing in our electrical business. Like, if we have a two week shutdown or a one month shutdown, we've done a couple of scenarios financially of like, what does that look like for us? Um, and we've done it without paying any staff any wages. Um, and we've done it with paying wages. And we've just had a different couple of scenarios there and said, what's this going to look like? Um, we sort of saw this coming a little bit. We didn't realize it would be as bad as it has been for some businesses. Luckily in electrical right now, it hasn't impacted us just yet like it has for cafes, restaurants, gyms, those sort of things. Um, but I was going to ask if you if you know, if if you do let your staff go, because I've talked openly with my staff about it and, sa- and said there is a possibility we might need to let you go. Um, is it possible to let people go so that they could go onto the... Um, job seeking allowance for four weeks and then come back and be employed while we withhold their annual leave over that period and then they come back on? There is some um, merit in that uh, as to, may you just about need a human resources lawyer to give you the definitive answer. Yeah. Uh, all, all I can say is that uh, my understanding is that uh, mate, Things may not be technically correct in what you're doing, but people are not so much turning a blind eye to it, but there are a lot of concessions being allowed for right now. I don't think any government department is going to read the right act to you if you, if you, if you haven't got it quite right. Um, and um, so, I, what you know, hardly a definitive answer, but um, it, 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 so there are so many questions of, 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 uh, unanswered at the moment. So um, we, we've got numerous clients with so many questions and we're just um you know we've we've got uh, 10 accountants on board and i've sort of delegated the task of a number of them to find answers on various things you know but and that one i don't know yet is is there some questions that you have got and found answers to that have been uh, helpful to clients that you'll be willing to share well what 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 i have um uh, the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan. I'm saying to most businesses, why would you not make application right now? You yeah. Um, so as as a buffer. Yeah. Because that is that is a lot of money. It's unsecured loan. Fifty uh, percent of it's guaranteed by the government. So uh, and the banks, the Prudential Authority, the government Prudential Authority has has uh, instructed lenders to be uh, less um, um, or, or, or to be. Yeah. To be less strict, yeah. Uh, so uh, to uh, and approve these loans um, without the usual red tape. So yeah. um, that is that is something that um, uh, I, I think most businesses should take up. 
Um, and, and why would you not uh, when when the when when the when the offer is there? Um, you know the, the the issue of the you know being able to draw your superannuation, uh, mate. That's that's fine. That's more for employees more than anyone. Uh, you know individuals, not so much businesses. Um, you know you try to avoid that, of course. Yeah. But um, especially with you the know, down market. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's when you that's when you crystallise your losses, isn't it? You know at the moment it's just all paper losses, but so try to hang in there on that one. Um, we, we, look, generally speaking, uh, mate, with, with businesses, I'm, I'm, I'm simply uh, trying to arrange uh, a, a keep, you know, keep the keep doors open. We don't know how long this is going to go for. So businesses whose income has been virtually killed, uh, we're, we're trying to ensure that we maximise our our in, entitlements under the stimulus package, uh, and if that's what gets us through until such time as you know things. Um, Things ease and we can reopen our doors. Then mission accomplished, you know. Um, and um, in in most cases, that can only happen is if they let virtually, you know, the, the bulk of their staff go, because they, they just simply can't afford to keep on keep that staff in the hope that business is going to turn around in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks. Because mate, no one's we're all bracing ourselves for a long term, you know. Yeah, uh, just on that, because I do see a lot of businesses hold on to staff too long. And yep. can you say a little bit about your experience around, it doesn't have to be in this particular uh, period of coronavirus, but when you, you might have seen other businesses, it's like, I don't know, you should probably look at getting rid of some staff and then they don't because of, no, they're my family or they're my friends, I don't want to let them go. Like they hold on too long and it actually uh, impacts them negatively. Could you just say something on that? Because I think that's a good message we can get out to people that now's not the time to be overly uh, hold on to the, the staff too long, even though the objective is to hold on to staff, but we have to obviously be aware of your income and profitability through this time also. Have you got something to talk about around that? Oh, look, I, I, I think... I think oh, may tell you the truth, I don't have too many clients that... Uh, are of the view that they're going to hang on to their clients, uh, sorry, hang on oh. to their staff for as long as possible. Mate, they, they are doing what they need to do. Yeah. I, I, I think, mate, there aren't too many clients I have to convince to, you know, do what needs to be done uh, to, to, to keep their doors open for as long as possible. The reality is that w when your income is 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 uh, slashed to the degree that to the degree that it has been, um, yeah, lovely to keep your staff if you knew it's only a period of you know a week or two or a month even. The problem is we don't know how long it's going to be. It could be it could be a much longer time. So, so look, words of wisdom are, sim are simply do what you need to do to keep your your, your your doors open. And if that that is slashing your your staff, then you've got to do it. Yeah. Um, there's there's that's the harsh reality, and that's what I think across the board is is happening. Maybe we've got you know just have a look at those Centrelink Centrelink lines. It, mm. it is it's, it is very very sad. But may they businesses in order to keep the doors open, have to slash their staff and just there's there's no real choice in the matter. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's crazy the amount of lines and the amount of people that lost their job on the, that day that the government announced that these places have to shut down. Um, Absolutely, overnight. And um, I, I suppose, you know, you, you could say, well, shit, didn't we see it coming? Well, yeah, no, we, not we, really. We, <laughs> we, we we sort of guessed at it. We thought it might, but my goodness, it's just happened so quickly and, and so severely, you know. And so, um, yeah, we we sort of feel like we're we're backtracking and we're we're sort of uh, we're we're we're, in, we're 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 just trying to hang in there for the time being, right? And and this time being could go on for a long time. So, so you've got to cut your overheads. You know, you're not paying rent. You can't pay staff. Uh, and uh, you know you're retaining your business as a shell for the time being, and seeing if you can earn other income opportunities elsewhere. Uh, very hard, but you know it's inevitable that you know the business will will, will still have some overheads uh, and, and no income. Maybe well, there's only so so far you can go with that. Yeah. Um, but you know the, the rent situation. We, we still don't know where we are with rent. You know, commercial rent. Yeah. Um, whilst some landlords are, are providing concessions, uh, mate, unless they virtually kill the rent. Um, I mean, shops that have to close their doors. Well, obviously, rent. You know, that's the end of the rent there, right? Because, but those businesses aren't necessarily 
going away. They're just closing the doors. They're doing takeaways. In those situations, I mean, my understanding is that there's rent concessions being applied all over the place, right? And and landlords, uh, uh, mate, landlords have got the ability to go to their financier and sort of, uh, uh, you know, with a, a six-month uh, uh, moratorium on, on loan payments. So they've got the ability to provide the same with rent. Yeah. Right? If I'm a landlord and uh, I don't have to make loan payments, uh, then I probably should pass that benefit on to the to the to the landlord either uh, to the tenant either by way of uh, nil cost rent for the next six months or at the very least a deferment of rent. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for sure. Because yeah. even if that tenant did move out, because sorry I can't pay you because I'm not making income, they move out. What tenant's going to move in? No one's right going to move now. in, are they? Yeah. No. So. No. No. That's what the landlord and, has and, to remember. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, exactly, and, and 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 from what I've heard, mate, that is what's happening um, pretty well across the board. And there aren't too many hard-nosed landlords that are simply saying, you know, no, it's business as usual. That is just, uh, that's not exactly towing the line, is it? No, yeah, mm. I think um, definitely noticing a level of camaraderie across Australians at the moment, and helping each other out financially, and. Um, you know, th with those sorts of examples, it's really good. Um, financiers, yeah. like giving discounts and, you know, banks le letting you defer uh, payments and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. So, so I, I, I am, uh, the, other, the, 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 uh, the loan deferments is, my understanding is it's mainly just the, uh, the big four, but I still haven't got an answer on um, whether, other lenders uh, are towing the line as well. For example, if you've got a car loan, for example, right? If that car loan is with some sort of, you know, third tier lender, are they going to are they going to provide you a six month uh, moratorium? Don't know. Yeah. Um, it, it is mainly uh, my understanding is the Prudential Authority, government Prudential Authority that, that governs all lenders. They have um, put pressure on all lenders to provide the same level of assistance. So. Uh, one would like to think that um, that is available. So if you've got a car loan, for example, and and, and it's with, um, you know, Toyota Finance or whatever it might be, uh, you contact Toyota Finance, apply for an extension, apply for a six-month moratorium, you'd like to think that they would be receptive to it. And, and my understanding is that the pressure from the Prudential Authority is uh, for Toyota, in that case, to provide that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So if you can kill those loan repayments, if you can kill the rent, if you can kill your staff, mate, most of your overheads are gone. And so you might be there for you might be there later on uh, to reopen your doors when things improve. I've been calling that the hibernation phase, where you you're hibernating. Yeah. You're, you've cut all your costs to, to the point where you used to make the income that would cover that to your break even point, and you're actually yeah. just sitting even. So yeah. that's um, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's so, it, mate. We're, and, 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 and this hibernation period could go for a week or could go for a month, but yeah. it's probably several months that is the reality, yep. Is there anything else that you would like to share with anyone that might be a bit confused about certain things? I guess this is going to come off the back of some questions that you've been asked and maybe some frequently asked questions that you could... Oh, look, I think, I think we've covered just about everything, mate. I think, uh, look, there, you know, there, there are a lot of businesses out there with questions. They're going to, one would like to think that they've got advisors there that are advising them. Uh, I wouldn't be making decisions without talking to their advisors because uh, their advisors, um, and by that I mean in, in most cases their accountants presumably, um, um, mate, we're all getting answers, you know, sort of, you know, it's sort of things are, uh, are pretty fresh and pretty hot off the press. So we don't have definitive answers but we've got we've got general answers and, and in some cases you've asked questions and I don't, I don't have answers because we can't get the answers right now yeah but we, we've got the broad brush broad brush brush strategies is what needs to be looked at and um, those those finer points will be sorted uh, pretty soon you know? yeah yeah sure. so the idea is to hang in there and uh, that means cut your overheads don't pay your rent don't pay your loan payments um, you know, shed your staff and um, hang in there. Yep. Mm. Yep. Make it through this period and there's going to be plenty Make of opportunity at the other side. I think so, mate, because yeah. when the recovery happens, my prediction is that it's going to happen very quickly. There, there will be, there will be, uh, we, we will go into a recovery phase that uh, like we haven't seen before is, is what I'd like to think is going to happen at the end of all this. Yeah. Cool. Mm. 
I really appreciate mm. your time, Steve. Thanks for your well, time. Mate, well, well, good luck, Greg, and um, mate, uh, feel free to give me a call whenever you like. You know? Yeah, and, I will. Uh, yeah. If All we right, have some questions easy. come off the back end of this, I'll let you know and, yeah, and yeah, um, we'll yeah, get some answers. Yeah, yeah, feel free. Good on you. Good luck, mate. Thanks so much. See you, Steve. All right, see you, Greg. Okay, mate. Bye.